Hello everyone and welcome to this video in which we'll look at the wedge product and its role as an anti-symmetric operation in the algebra of differential forms as denoted by this wedge symbol here. Uh, this anti-symmetry is key to defining orientation and volume on manifolds and the wedge product also helps construct the basis for spaces of K forms such as omega 1 of Rn for one forms and omega 2 of Rn for two forms. Uh, we will also cover its properties like bilinearity and associativity. So let's make a start. Uh, hide that. Okay, so the wedge product is a fundamental operation in differential geometry and multilinear algebra used extensively in the study of differential forms. It combines vectors, forms, and their differentials in a way that captures the orientation and volume elements of spaces. Now, over a couple of videos, we'll talk about volumes and, and, and look at what's meant by that. Now, a tangent vector at a point P on a manifold Rn is an object that can be thought of as a direction along which one can move from that point. Vectors are geometric objects. So in local coordinates, x1, x2 to xn, depending on the dimension of the space, a tangent vector v can be expressed as v equals vi d dxi, vi are the components, and d dxi are the basis vectors for each of the co coordinate directions. Now, the collection of all tangent vectors at a point P forms a vector space called the tangent space, denoted by the tangent space to Rn at the point P. And the cotangent space at a point P, denoted T asterisk of Rn at the point P, is the dual space or the cotangent space to the tangent space. It consists of all linear functionals that map tangent vectors to real numbers. And so what I'm going to do now is let's all represent that visually. So the manifold, tangent space, and cotangent spaces are represented below. So we have a manifold here in the larger set of axes. R3 is our manifold here for the example purposes. We have the tangent space at the point P and the basis vectors pointing in the appropriate relevant directions. DDX along the X direction um, and so on. And then the cotangent space or dual space dual tangent space is this one, T star of the manifold R3 um, at the point P. All right. Now, this is the only uh, screen or shot in which uh, slide in which I'll have the two separated. Um, just from now on, generally uh, going to put those two together and keep them because it's a one point P. All right. There's not two point P's here. All right. So, but I'm just, for the sake of this video, just showing, okay, here's the tangent space, here's the dual tangent space or the cotangent space, and they're both centered on the point P, all right? Their axes coincide in both cases. And we represent the dual tangent space using the one forms dx, dy, dz, all right? Now I am getting to the wedge product, but I just want to start with one forms because we can build higher forms using wedge product. But let's start with one forms and what they are. So here we have the tangent space with some point P for our manifold R3 in this case. And here's the dual tangent or cotangent space. Next. All right, so given a vector V at a point P, the vector V at our point P on a manifold R3, our manifold again, a one form omega, omega is a linear map. Okay, so omega, takes a vector in the tangent space to the manifold at point P, which in this case is just R3, but more generally we just M for manifold, and it maps that to the reals. So what it does, it takes a vector in the tangent space here, as you can see in the tangent space here, and contracts that with the, with the one form omega, and contracts that to produce a scale of quantity, all right, a real number at the point P. All right, so, um, and as you can see, I've represented both the tangent space and the dual or cotangent space together on the same set of axes because they coincide at the point P here. And this axis dx, the one form dx or ddx in the vector form. Okay, they're both sharing the same axes. All right, so visually that's what it looks like. So 
uh, a one form takes a vector from the tangent space to the point P and returns the number R. All right, so it's a map from the tangent space to the reals. All right, so let's have a look at that. So we can represent our vector this way, the vector on the previous slide represented this way in terms of its components and the basis vectors, we're in R3, represent it like this, in this column form. Our one form, we can expand that out, expand that out in terms of the one forms dx, dy, dz, the whole thing omega is still a one form, it's just a linear combination of them. And the components here represented as just a row vector, if you like. Um, so omega of v acts, um, it takes a vector v, omega here takes a vector v here, right, contracts with it. Here's the index notation here, and we'll bring that down now shortly to the Kronecker delta. So what we'll do though, is with the components, we'll take those out together, put them together. Then we have dxi, d, or partial, partial xj. Um, now Kronecker delta applies here, ij, when i is equal to j, we have, or j is equal to i, we have omega i vi, right? and that's the same result as multiplying the row vector with the column vector, and that gives us this combination of the terms. So it picks out the same terms, omega i, vi, and expanding those. In the case of R3 from the previous slide and from our vector above, we're going to have three terms here. All right, let's move on. So now definition and basic properties of the wedge product. So let's go from here now. This is now the focus of the video. So the wedge product denoted by the wedge here is an associative and bilinear operation on differential forms. For two differential forms, omega and eta, sorry, there's a second omega, it shouldn't be there. In the proofreading, I've missed it. It should just be omega here and eta here. So the wedge product omega wedge eta is defined such that the anti-symmetry property omega wedge eta is the negative of eta wedge omega. All right. This property means that swapping the order of the forms changes the sign of the product. Associativity here, you can see how that applies. Distributivity, as you can see here, we can expand it out. Omega wedge eta plus omega wedge theta. So the wedge product of basis forms. Now, in a given coordinate system x1, x2, xn, the basic differential forms dxi form a basis. The wedge product of these basis forms is defined as follows. dxi wedge dxj is minus dxj wedge dxi. You've seen that anti-symmetric property. This anti-symmetry implies, must be, that dxi wedge dxi with itself must be zero because you can't have this equal to the negative of itself, except in the case where it's zero. All right, for example, in three-dimensional space, we have dx wedge dy is minus dy wedge dx, okay? Um, examples of wedge products for one forms, consider two one forms, omega is the scalar a times the one form dx, and eta is the scalar b times uh, the one form dy, and the wedge product, omega wedge eta is a dx wedge b dy, is multiply the constants together, and we have dx wedge dy. Two forms, consider the two form omega is a dx wedge dy, and the one form eta equals b dz, now b is a constant, a is a constant, so their wedge product, omega wedge eta is a dx wedge dy, wedge b dz. Well, let's just take the constants out together, a times b, and then we formed this wedge product here, which is now a three form. All right, whoops, I went too far. Let's do that again, yep, so general properties, uh, is that right, yep. General properties, degree, if omega is a p-form and eta is a q-form, then omega wedge eta is a p plus q-form. We've seen that on the previous slide, we had a two-form and a one-form, and the wedge product created a three-form. Commutativity with scalars, scalars can be factored out of the wedge product, as you've seen. Now, geometric interpretation, and I'm going to focus more on this in the video on the one form, the video on the two form, and then, uh, which I'll shortly put on, is the video on the three form. Those three videos will cover particularly geometric interpretation, but I'll just briefly summarise it here, um, because they're going to be the subjects of the coming videos. 
Now the wedge product can be interpreted geometrically as a way to measure oriented volume elements. We say volume elements, but we could be talking about length, we could be talking about an area or a volume and so on, okay? So area element, the wedge product of two vectors U and V in R2 gives an area element. If omega and eta are one forms associated with the vectors U and V, then omega wedge eta represents the parallelogram uh, spanned by these vectors. Now that's the subject of the um, introduction to two forms video. That's all in there. I'll cover that in detail and go through it for you. Uh, I'm just briefly summarizing here. All right. Now in higher dimensions, the wedge product combines differentials to form higher dimensional volume elements. So three forms, for example, in R3, the wedge product dx wedge dy, du wedge dz represents the volume element. And that's also the subject of um, the introduction to three forms, uh, which will be going on up on the website, on the channel shortly. Now their role in the basis of each type of space, now zero forms, functions, Okay, the basis of zero forms is just a set of scalar functions defined on the manifold. All right, zero forms are just functions, scalars. Um, they are represented as omega zero of the manifold. In this case, I'm saying Rn, but otherwise I just put capital M there, as you'll see I'll do in the other videos. Uh, or you could use this large capital lambda symbol, zero, not the small wedge, but the capital lambda, it's a large one. Uh, zero meaning zero forms of whatever your manifold is in this particular case in this video we're focusing on Rn. One forms, the basis one forms in n-dimensional space are dx1, dx2 all the way up to dxn. Uh, they are represented as omega1 of Rn or lambda, capital lambda 1 of Rn. Now two forms, the basis two forms in two-dimensional space is dx wedge dy. Now the basis two forms in three-dimensional space are dx dy, dy dz, dz dx, um, that combination. The basis two forms in four-dimensional space are, now four-dimensional we've got not just x, y and z, but x, y, z, w. So we've got four coordinates there, okay. Um, so we can have dx wedge dy, dx wedge dz, dx wedge dw, dy wedge dz, dy wedge dw, dz, wedge dw. So that's the basis of two forms in four-dimensional space. The basis two forms in the n-dimensional space are these combinations, dxi wedge dxj for um, i equal to greater than 1, less than j equal to less than n, the dimension of the space. That means there are n on two such elements in n-dimensional space. All right, so you can work that out. Um, and so in four-dimensional space, you're going to have the six elements here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, they are represented as omega-2 of Rn, or capital lambda-2 of Rn. So we've got three forms. All right, the basis three forms are dxi, wedge, dxj, wedge, dxk. Uh, again here for i equal to greater than one, less than j, less than k. Because remember, if I... If any two indices are equal to each other, this whole thing is zero. So that's not going to form a basis, is it? So it needs so i is equal to greater than one, but less than j, less than k, equal to less than n. Okay, there are n on three such basis elements in n-dimensional space. And they are represented as omega-3 of Rn, or if you're some manifold m, just put m there. Um, omega, or whatever your manifold is, omega-3 of Rn, or whatever your manifold is. Now, uh, let's just move that a little bit. All right, now, the basis P forms are given by wedge products of P different one forms, dx i1, dx i2, wedge, dot, 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 so on forever, up to dx i p, where again, the same pattern, i1 is equal to greater than one, less than i2, less than dot, 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 less than i p, equal to less than n, okay? So that's the, um, Okay, so that's your two forms, uh, uh, P, uh, sorry, P forms uh, are wedge products of P different one forms. Sorry about that. All right, there are N on P such basis elements in n-dimensional space. They are represented by omega P of Rn or whatever your manifold is, or capital lambda of P Rn. All right, let's have a look at some examples again. So consider 
omega is dx and eta is dy, then omega wedge eta is dx wedge dy. Okay, uh, consider omega dy wedge dz and eta equals y dz wedge dx. Now watch out here, there's d dz there, dz there. And when we wedge them together, watch out because they're two of the same. So wedge, uh, sorry, omega wedge eta is x dy wedge dz, wedge y dz, wedge dx. Now let's just take out the uh, constants, scalars, take those out the front. So we've got x and y here, x here, y here. And then we have dy wedge dz, wedge dz, wedge dx. So far so good, except here, dz wedge dz must be zero. So the whole thing goes to zero, okay, since dz wedge dz is zero. Now the wedge product, okay, perhaps they are here. All right, so the wedge product is a bilinear. Uh, you could take two arguments and put them in there and handle them simultaneously, so bilinear in that sense. Anti-symmetric operation, that is, uh, remember if you reverse them, you get the negative, so anti-symmetric. That is essential in the construction of differential forms, allowing for the representation of oriented areas, volumes, and areas and volumes are subject to the introduction to two forms and introduction to three forms videos on this channel, and higher dimensional analogues in differential geometry. Now, it plays a crucial role in the formulation of integrals over manifolds and in expressing physical laws such as electromagnetism and general, as in electromagnetism and general relativity, where differential forms and their wedge products provide a natural language for describing uh, field theories. All right, um, I hope, I hope everyone, um, that video, this video has been useful to you. Um, if it is, please like it and subscribe. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So please take care of yourselves and uh, have a good day wherever you are. Thanks again. Bye.